hopefully we all know that X11 is just the protocol. And while other X11 servers exist like TinyX, in the past we had X386, which is what Xorg forked from on Linux, Xorg is basically the de facto standard X11 server. And it probably is going to be until X11 eventually dies. Maybe you can say X Wayland, but that's just pulling at straw. With that being said, it doesn't mean it's the case everywhere that makes use of X11. The best example of this is over on OpenBSD, where they actually maintain something themselves that is related to Xorg, but is still its own distinct separate project. That is a project called Xenakara, or Xenakara, I'm sure someone who uses OpenBSD is going to correct me. And we'll get into what it is and what makes it different in just a moment, but before we get to that, did you know that since 2019, there has been a Linux distro that ships Xenakara instead of Xorg? That distro is a little distro known as Hyperbola, which isn't Parabola, but in some ways they are related. These are both Linux Libre distros. These are distros that ship the Linux Libre kernel, a Linux kernel that strips out all of the proprietary blobs, basically making it so a lot of hardware simply is not going to work, but with the advantage of only having free software. And a lot of these also go the extra step to strip out all of the proprietary software from the repos as well, so it's nothing but free software. It is the kind of distro you'd use if you are Richard Stallman, but you're Richard Stallman who actually knows how to install Linux. Both Parabola and Hyperbola are Arch Linux based distros, but they do have a very big difference. Parabola takes more of the rolling release style approach, much like the original Arch Linux. Hyperbola takes more of a Debian-like approach where you have actual releases of the distro. But if Hyperbola is a Linux Libre distro, why bother not shipping Xorg? It's not like Xorg, you know, is proprietary, has a weird license like X3D6, or even has some like weird term in their license where you could say, okay, maybe this is or isn't free software. The reason why they are using it is probably for the same reason why OpenBSD is doing so. The reason why they are using it is much the same as why OpenBSD made it in the first place, made this fork. Xenakara you might reasonably describe as a fork, but they don't describe it like that themselves. The goal of Xenakara is to provide a framework to host local modifications and to automate the build of the modular XOR components, including third-party packages and some software maintained by OpenBSD developers. It is not a fork. We are tracking XOR modifications and try to push back our changes whenever they are good for upstream too. So it's sort of like a soft fork. They make a bunch of additions to XORG, but they're not trying to take it in a completely different direction. It's sort of like XORG+. Plus. Now you might be saying, if they're not going to do a hard fork, all they're going to do is just apply some patches to it. Why does the fork... Why does the fork need to exist? Why not just submit everything upstream and then go from there? Well, that would be a great idea, and I'm sure if they could get everything upstreamed, they would absolutely want to. The problem is sometimes certain things don't fit with the mainline version of the project and sort of need to sit outside. Say, for example, with the Grub thing I talked about recently, where Arch Linux was using vanilla Grub, but every other distro wanted to make use of this feature that wasn't being implemented. So Red Hat made a patch set and then everybody just used the patch set. It didn't fit the upstream project, but people still wanted the feature. Now, even though it's relatively new on Linux, Xenakara is not a new project whatsoever. It actually started all the way back in 2006. And back then, it sort of started as a humble build system for Xorg. 
As people may already know, one of the main changes in Xorg 7.x is a new modular build system using GNU Auto Tools. This is OpenBSD GNU Bad. The Xorg source tree has been split into more than 300 more or less independent packages. Xorg has decided that the best tool to manage the build of this new modularized source tree are the GNU Auto Tools. They have an existing large user and developer base and thus feel easier to use by the majority of developers. Being maintained outside of the Xorg project is supposed to lower the maintenance burden on the Xorg developers, which are now free to concentrate on their code. The GNOME package config tool is used to keep track of version dependencies between new modules. And how does this all affect the OpenBSD CVS repository? To coordinate the build of the myriad of packages, I've been working on a meta build system using makefile.bsd-wrapper. I've named this system Zenakara after the fish known to clean the aquarium's windows. A fish better known as the Bristle Nose Pleco. But since those early build system days, the project has expanded and evolved, and nowadays includes a lot of changes to the way that Xorg would normally function. But what sort of changes are we actually talking about? Well, over on the Hyperbola announcement, it includes one of the major ones. So, Xorg has this legacy of wanting to run as the root user, and for obvious reasons, Having your display server running as root is probably not a good idea. Just as a general rule, if something doesn't need to have root access, it shouldn't have root access, and your display server is one of those things. So in Zenakara, it makes use of a dedicated X11 user by default to drop privileges and perform privilege separation in accordance to OpenBSD's least privilege policy, which basically means that every module, every part of your system should run at the lowest privilege possible, which is just a generally good idea to follow, but can be pretty easy to ignore. For example, a lot of things you run on your system when they don't run as a regular user, just run it as root and it's gonna work. That should generally be avoided, and you should only give it the permissions that it needs to be given. Now, this can be done without Zenakara. Zenakara just streamlines it and makes it so it always does this, and you never have to think about it. And completely unrelated to security, it also includes two really interesting window managers. One of them is CWM. This is based on but rewritten from Evil WM. It is a stacking window manager. And also FVWM, otherwise known as F question mark virtual window manager, which happens to be what XFWM, the XFC window manager, and Enlightenment are actually based on. Like this is one of those weird fundamental things that nobody else but me is gonna care about, but I kinda love it. And Hyperbola were interested in many of these changes. While they do mention the window manager on here as well, I would imagine the main reason is for things like the dedicated X11 user and more of the security and feature things that are going to affect the average everyday user. Most people using it probably are not gonna run it with CWM. But besides just being a Linux Libre distro, Hyperbola has always been a really weird distro. So they aren't exactly happy with the direction of Linux, and back in 2019, said they were planning to shift away soon, and instead become a completely new OS derived from several BSD implementations. This will not be a distro, but a hard fork of the OpenBSD kernel and user space, including new code written under GPL v3 and LGPL v3 to replace GPL incompatible parts and non-free ones. And their reasons for doing this are such. Linux kernel forcing adoption of DRM, including HDCP, basically making HDCP work on Linux. 
Linux kernel's proposed usage of Rust, which contains freedom flaws and a centralized code repository that is more prone to cyber attack and generally requires internet access to use. This is no longer proposed, this has actually happened. Linux kernel being written without security in mind, and many GNU user space and core utils are all forcing adoption of features without build time options to disable them, e.g. Pulse Audio, Systemd, Rust, Java as forced dependencies. And even though I don't care to run things like this, I do think it's really cool when weird things like this are just going on somewhere in the FOSS space. It's how we get this interesting innovation pushing us in these certain directions, even if most people just simply don't care about it, it's fun nonetheless. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you use Hyperbola? Have you used OpenBSD? Do you run Zenikara? Or do you even just not use X11 altogether? I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribe, Sally Barrow, Pay linked down below. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.